Okay, looking at this tank, uh, so night, well, night time call, it's 8 pm, 8.30 I think. Thought with the agitator motor, it's not going round. This is going to do a little diagnostic before it comes on. Push it again. You stop it, start it, start it. Mm. It's been off for an hour, so it should have. Oh, it's still quite warm. Can't even turn it around. Why are we flashing? Have we got any fault codes? No, we haven't. Second press, it should start straight away. There we go. Didn't wait long enough. Okay, so that's going. This should now be going. Usually if it's a weak capacitor, give them a spin, they'll uh, they'll uh, keep going at roughly the right speed. So we need to get the cover off and see what's going on in that electrical box. Okay, that's reading 2.8. Uh, is it microfarads? Yeah, microfarads. Uh, let's get that backlight on. Yeah, 2.8 microfarads. It's a five, so I would say that should be strong enough for that to run. I've seen them, seen them work down down much lower than that. So I'm tending to think we've got a failed motor. It's quite an old one because it's got a metal cover. It's probably the original motor on there. If not, no, it's changed when the tank was very new. And this is let's get a torch. I remember putting this in new ninety seven. 97 that is, so uh, it's 20, what's that, 25 years old? So it's got some hours on it. Uh, we try a new capacitor, 99% sure it's going to be the motor. Right, that's for the new one on there. It's got more strength to turn, but it's still going around way too slow, so it's gearbox motor, something's gone wrong in it, so. That is all we need to know. Um, well, actually, I say it's all we need to know. We will just confirm we've got the right voltage on it. I've never known we'll not have the right voltage on there. Uh, although, vaguely, he's got some issue with the wash. That looks okay because it's at the stop. There is a thing I had them where they stopped the wash midway through. And that was upsetting it because during the wash they run the motor in the opposite direction, and it was that one was trying to run in both directions at once. Um, yeah, we we'll check that first. I don't know if I was quick enough. There's a little rat set on there. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so yes, we didn't, I don't know if I said, we, we had 240 volts on one. What they do, neutral in the centre, put live on the bottom, it'll run one, one way, put live on the top, it'll run the other way, so they can swap the direction during the wash, so it sprays the water in a different direction. Wash water's deflected off a little, looks like a fan blade on the paddle. But if you put 240 volts on both sides, it, it can't. It tries to run in both directions at once and doesn't do anything. So we've checked. We had 240 volts there, and I think 10 volts on there. 
which kind of does point to the motor being knackered because with the capacitor across it, it should have a lot more than 10 volts. Although with that one, it did make more of an effort to turn, so that one <coughs> being weak hasn't helped. Got two of the bolts out. These two, this side, are stuck. Well, that one I've got it to turn, but the aluminium's corroded and it's filled the gap in the threads and basically made like a powdery thread, you know, in the aluminium so it won't slide out. We've unscrewed it as far as it'll go and then it catches on that pipe on the other side. So anyway, we've got that one loose. This one's tight, like snapping the bolt off tight. So uh, we've now got that, we've cut through that with a saw. So hopefully we can get enough movement that we can get this to think about coming loose. Um, because this is threaded as well. So they wind the bolts in tight so they won't turn. And then uh, you put the nut on the top so you, the bolts are not free spinning. So for that little bit of movement, might be enough to persuade this bolt to start spinning and then once they're both loose we can drop this pipe down a bit to get room to fully wind the bolt out um yeah in the arse. and then we've got this i've loosened that off and the paddle should drop down and it hasn't so that appears to be stuck in there as well so it's turning into one of them Okay, we've got the mounting bolts loose and that side took off this side. So we've, we've lifted that cradle up. The spray thing stayed where it is because it's held in place by that tube. And that's given us enough room to be able to wind that nut out without the head catching on the pipe. And now we uh, uh, pry that up. That's actually loose now. So we can... Uh, Take this back out and bolt it all back down again and then see about getting the paddle free. Right, got the motor off. Uh, I you always put a little bit of grease on these when I put them back on, like food grease or something, just to stop them uh, galling up and that's stainless on stainless. Uh, that one's wound back in. I've got a die nut, we'll probably wind down that to clean the threads up. Um, this one. Need to get the grips on there because it's quite sharp. I hope if we wind that back up with some grips, it might just wind that piece off. That's that die nut. It's just a. It's just for cleaning up threads. It's not for cutting, you know, new threads on something. But it's just a job for getting the sort of aluminium oxide. Or if you've got one thread that's got a bit squashed or something, it will clean it up. Okay, my sole's all cleaned up. Um, when you put the paddle on, it's got two little uh, drive dogs on the uh, output of the agitator and they need to go down in those little half moon uh, cutouts. Um, if you're not careful, you can bolt them up with those little those bits sitting on the top here and it will work for a bit. And then they'll slide around, they'll get to that section and the bolt will come loose. Um, so usually when you when you put these put it back together you can just about see the top of this through that hole that's a good indication it's in there but it, it might be worth checking it with a mirror underneath there looking up and you can see that that's located properly I, I usually put it on there spinning around my hand pushing up and then you'll feel it go up a bit and then you just do the bolt up real quick with the other hand Okay, that's bolted on there. So if I lift, I lift the paddle up, you can see that bolt come up there. So get that done up by hand, and then Yep. Right. 
10 now. And it's not quite up, I don't think. You don't need to do them stupid tight again because it's a stainless steel bolt and they're not very not very strong. Uh, yeah, I think you can just about see the top of it through there. So that's that done. And then we just gotta wire it. There we go. Okay. There we go. Starts it straight away. Well, it's cooling. It took quite a few degrees. Well, yeah, well, it was when we turned it on. A couple of degrees at least. Uh, we kept the wash as much as we can with milk in there. All the solenoids work. I can't check the level sensor um, and a weak capacitor on the wash pump, so that might have been the issue with that. And um, we just make sure we've got both the taps open. Yeah. So that's about it, really. Seems to be ranging about quite a bit. And the temperature sensors on the way out. Okay, uh, so 2211, it's going to be about an hour's drive home. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a late finish. <laughs> Go and microwave me dinner. Yep, yeah, right.